breathe. <laughs> Everyone breathe. breathe. Everybody's going to be breathe and going to be breath. calm tonight, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Wino Wednesday number ten. I did not know that. That's a lot. That's ten. Wi- that's a lot of wino. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> well, everyone, take take a break. Take a break for an hour with us. Exactly, and we're just going to chat about the good things in life, which are wine and cheese. I am Gina, the founder and cheese whiz at Benissimo. I'm Robbie G, the professor of cheese. And founder of the Academy of Cheese. Correct. Yes, and uh, we welcome you, um, all of our favorites. Hi, great to see you again. Um, And anyone new joining us today. If you're new and you've got a YouTube account, you can use the chat feature and I'll try to answer questions that way. Um, It's super fun. And uh, if you're not, you can just kind of watch along and see the answers as we go. (laughs) And we'll do the best that we can. Uh, But what we'll do today is go over the wine, talk a little bit about the cheese, talk about why they're so good together, and just like Rob said, um, relax a little, chill. And you can tell I'm not chilled. Just take a, it's, been a, it's been a weird day, lots of coffee, lots, just lots of stuff going on. Right. The work and the world and everything. Work and the world, yeah. which means it's time to do the first pour of the evening. It is five <laughs> o'clock somewhere, that somewhere is here. So, everyone, Pinot Noir, and what I'm gonna start with by saying is it's one of the most cheese-friendly yeah wines out there when you're talking about reds mm-hmm. yeah yeah you know i, I would say um when it comes to to wines the most well the, i think the most popular red wine in the united states is is um cabernet, cabernet? okay i would have guessed pinot so all right um uh, i mean it, it's, yeah. it's i think it made a, a big leap after that movie um that takes the one with bart with um giamatti sideways sideways when poor merlot went yeah. up <laughs> Pinot Noir went up. Yeah. Because you know what? That's true. The prices of Pinot Noir went up after that movie. I feel like that gave yeah. it a lot of, you know, cachet. Exactly. So it's 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 been on the upward trajectory since then. But it's it is a really great wine, especially for pairing with uh, with cheese because it's it's more medium bodied. It's uh, a lot of times um, fruit forward, really nice complexity. But it's it gives a good balance for cheese, and that's really what we're looking for when it comes to pairing. Cabs just tend to be big and sometimes tannic and in your face. In your face, <laughs> and they can. Um, it just can sort of clash or overwhelm sometimes with with yeah. cheeses. And so usually what we're looking for is more of the medium bodied reds. Mm-hmm. We've talked about on this show. Is this is a show. I call it a show. <laughs> on our these, show. In these events and these classes, the um, some other red wines we've focused on: Sangiovese or yeah. Chianti similar um, in okay. that they're more like table wines. They, I, I feel like this has more, uh, Pinots have more, what's the word? They're, they're more elegant. Ooh, word? good word. So I would say friendly, elegant. Elegant, I think elegant because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. a table wine to me is like, is not elegant. It's just like <laughs> something that you just <laughs> That's such a disparaging comment to the poor table wine. I, you this know, sounds unelegant. Well, a table wine yeah. is just, it's, it just That's doesn't true. seem as fancy or special. It's just That's a, a table wine. It's out yeah. all the time. True. But a, Like table cheese. Like a table cheese. <laughs> <laughs> a cheese made from a, from a table. <laughs> right? from the milk table, table cheese. That'll be a question at the end of the uh, uh, show. But this is, a, this is one from Northern California. It's from um, a, a part of California they call the North Coast, which, um, which is north of... Like Marin County, so it's yes. on the way up to Mendocino, yeah. right? Up all Mendo- the way Mendocino up Mendocino area, mm-hmm. Anderson mm-hmm. Valley. Yep. So it's um it's a good hour at least I would say out yeah. of San Francisco. Out of San Fran. So it's coastal. It's I'm sure delicious. I have not cheers. Salute. Whatever we want to say. Cheers oh, were you, today. Were you it's all American up? election selection. Oh yeah. Cheers. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, up the coast. So very different grapes than what you find in Napa Valley. Yeah, mm-hmm. and the the um. The winemaker is a father and son. Oh, that's a Sorry, good... I'm already happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. That was a good sign. Yeah. What are your initial thoughts? Fruit. Uh-huh. Pure fruit. And I like it. But it also has a little bit of a bite. It, to me, it's even um, uh, more forward, I guess. A little more assertive than a lot of Pinots, which is good. It's got some richness to it, but super fruity richness. I like it. Mm-hmm. They, so they're a father-son um, duo. Um, so they operate out of the North Coast, and they work with several vineyards. So they're the winemakers, but they're not the, the grape growers. So they bring grapes in from, I don't know, half a dozen, maybe maybe eight different vineyards yeah, in, the exactly, area. in the area. Mm-hmm. Um, and each wine they make 
um, is, is from a single vineyard. So it's really an expression of that specific terroir or that place. Yeah, and isn't that the... And, and the, season. Yeah, and season. What the Baxters wanted to do was have all Pinots, but mm-hmm. show how different that grape can be yeah. if it's grown in Alexander Valley, mm-hmm. right on the coast, Napa, uh, etc. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and so the idea there, I mean, this, this might be... Um, to beginner for some of our folks that have come exactly. to all these, like, yeah, blah, blah. In, in, pla- in places <laughs> where where the the sun is out longer in hotter places, it means riper grapes. So it gives mm-hmm. a more fruit forward kind of like a jammy yeah. um, flavor to, because of the, mm-hmm. the ripeness of the fruits. And in places where maybe they don't get as much sunlight, the other side of the hill. Um, That's right. It it can be more minerally or like limestoney and maybe not so fruit forward. I think that's true. This must be on the other side of the hill a little bit. Uh-huh. To me, it's a little flinty. Yeah. A little bit of that kind of mineral stone, yeah. you know, kind of thing. So I like it though. I Fun. love it. Can I just say love? Love, Jason, love, love. One of our great friends, Jason, loves this too. Cheers. What up, Jason? <laughs> Cheers indeed. Um, so as Gina said, because it's, it's um, you know, everyone's had probably the same thing on their mind we, we decided <laughs> to do for november 4th yes. um american election selections yes our election selection yeah. all americans and these are fabulous Rob. and also non-partisan yes exactly <laughs> these cheeses yes <laughs> they are uh united in their deliciousness yeah. <laughs> do you want to walk them through which one's which yeah, yeah? well okay. um the order what's the order we have on the, mm, that's the a good case question. there all right, Mr. Professor, we are going to start with the cotton seed. All right. So just so we, we are on the same page and uh, dig in now if you haven't already, but the first <laughs> cheese is going to be the cotton seed, and we'll talk about it in a second, but go ahead and dig into it. It's the one that looks like a brie. It's got the white uh, brie-ish rind on it. Mm, Number two Seascape. Is, that's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> and it is this bad boy right here, these little triangles. It's... um. Ours is sweating, so it's going to be nice and tasty. And we'll tell you why it's sweating momentarily. A little bit off-white color there for that one. The third cheese, is it the hooks? Yep. The third cheese is the orange one. (laughs) That one's pretty darn easy. I think Gina took a bite out of this. I didn't, I swear. (laughs) I want to so bad, though. I'm I'm, Sure, patience. Patience (laughs) is the word. (laughs) Patience is the word of the day. <laughs> okay, and I just messed this oh, piece up. Oh, that's a mangled little piece of joy. But the fourth one is a blue cheese. That's the Oregon blue. We'll get to that one last. Where's that one from? <laughs> <laughs> Who's buried in Grant's tomb? <laughs> okay, and we have uh, there's uh, apricots. California, California apricots. Mm-hmm. These are mm-hmm. Kikos, <gasps> our favorite little Spanish. <laughs> are they Spanish? They're they like are. fancy corn nuts. <laughs> I see grapes on the plate. Uh-huh. I see mini pickles or cornichons. Cornichons French. So we have invited a few other things into the plate today. Crackers. Mm-hmm. And lastly, the, this chocolate. This oh chocolate God. is from Chocopology. Chocopology, you guys. Delicious. So this is Connecticut chocolate maker. This one happens to have toffee and pretzels and sea salt in it with a nice, uh, I think, 70% dark chocolate. Mm. And we didn't talk about also the little uh, spread today. You got to try the spread with all the cheeses, you guys, because um, it's really delish. The spread is a rosemary and grapefruit yes. jam from New York. Uh huh. From Brooklyn, New York, a company called Brins. So it's just a little artisan jam maker. Did wild and wacky flavors. So grapefruit, rosemary, Rob. Um, my sister-in-law gave me grapefruit, so I made grapefruit peel, absinthe, vanilla. And it was delicious. I would a share jam? it with you, but yeah, and it jammed. It was so so good. I will make more. Maybe it'll become a um, Veni Gourmet sometime. But it was I don't delicious. get any tonight. You don't. You get nothing. <laughs> you get this. <laughs> That's fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Onwards. Onwards. So should we start with cotton seed and why yeah. it goes so good with this Pinot Noir? Yeah. So we're looking for. Uh, well, I shouldn't say we're looking for. I should. I should say that Pinot Noir is very versatile. So yeah. that gives us a lot of options to play around with. Um, and so uh, it, I guess what it does is it gives us the luxury of not having to look for anything too particular here. So the cotton yeah. seed. Mm, look at that. Aww. That's beautiful. Isn't that good? And so whoever made these plates, like they cut them kind of horizontally in half. Yeah. But you can Indeed. see you, the rind is edible and you can see how it ripens from the outside in. You can, the, the softer, gooier part towards the rind is going to be the riper part. It'll be a little uh, smellier and more flavorful mm-hmm. and then you have the chalkier 
um, kind of firmer interior. Yeah, because you get the little chalkiness because this is a mixed milk cheese. Mm -hmm. It's um, a mixture of goat and um, cow. So that chalkiness and that ripening comes from the goat part of that equation because mm -hmm. um, that's a typical goat uh, characteristic is that chalkiness on the inside, runniness on the out. I've had cotton seed for a long time. North Carolina. Very, mm -hmm. I, I have not seen this. I've only seen this maybe three times ever in ever? The shops. Mm -hmm. eh. Mm -hmm. I've seen a, I see their Robiola more frequently, mm -hmm. but they uh, the cheesemaker is they started in North they're in North Carolina and they opened in 2009. 2009 Boxcar is the name. Boxcar mm -hmm. is the cheesemaker and um, and they they do a lot of softies and mixed milks and they they're really most of them if not all of them are based on northern italian robiolas did you did you know yeah, that it, it, them? That, no i didn't know most of them yeah. were until i was reading a little bit more so mm -hmm. that's really cool and i don't know i'm sure i've talked about robiolas on on this program before <laughs> uh, <laughs> but ro robiolas are a cheese it's, it's more of a, a cheese style and they come from northern italy they're made in lombardy and uh, in piedmont and they are there's um few things that are true of them. One is that they are usually small format, meaning they're, you know, a pound or smaller pieces and they can be round, they can yeah. be square shaped. They are softer cheeses. Um, and so they're, they're almost like a, the Italian's version of a brie. Mm -hmm. And, and they're, a lot of times they are mixed milk. So they are goat, sheep, and cow, or goat, and, this one is goat and cow, mm -hmm. but they're oftentimes mixed milk yeah. cheeses. Which is good, because never, they never want to waste a drop of milk. Mm. So if they've got a little left over from each of those animals, what can, what can we make with it? And these small form cheeses like this are a great way to use up mm. um, some of the milk. It's really good. It's a classic brie. It's got that, the rind definitely has Mushroomy. that. Mushroomy. Mm -hmm. The mushroom, then the, the caviness. It's got again. mushroom, mm -hmm. it's got the earthiness is another term for that, but then you get like the tanginess of the goat and the really buttery of the cow's milk. Yeah, so I nice do get blend. the goat. I do get the goat. Mm -hmm. How is it with the, mm. with the vino? I like it with the vino. It's very complimentary. For those of you who have been with us before, when they go so well together that neither one adds or subtracts or takes from yeah. the other, I think those are real complimentary. To me, this one is, uh, they just both blend. Very nicely. I want to try this one with a little bit of this jam. Mm -hmm. Oh, try it with the jam. We're going to try everything with the jam, you guys, because that will change the cheese, I think. And it will change the wine. Um, and our friend Lynn is on. Hi, Lynn. Um, Hi, Lynn. Didn't notice the goat till we talked, but then once you do, mm -hmm. I agree, know that there's goat in there, you do get that tanginess mm -hmm. that is goat. Um, goatiness. <laughs> you know, it's really cool. So we're... Um, a, a lot of the American cheesemakers were pretty hard hit by COVID oh, this year, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, so these guys they they are down seventy percent in crazy? their sales this year. So yeah. um, that was part of why we, we chose to, to focus and to, to feature them. Yeah, um, for to try to well. support you know and thank you because mm -hmm. it all helps. <laughs> so it all helps and it's just so good. I can't wait to hear what you think about it with grapefruit because that's so tart with the creamy um, cheese. Take away, good. Um, mm -hmm. I should have put more grapefruit jam on there. The cheese was, I mean, the cheese tastes so good. It, it just get a really, it gave a really subtle hint of the, the jam. So I'm going to have to have more of it, but it was good. It didn't, I mean, it didn't take away. I, um, I'm not a huge grapefruit person. I, cause I like more sweet as opposed to me. It just mm -hmm. is, can be bitter, but, um, I like that. I want to, but I want to have another bite later with, uh, with more of it. A little, little bit more. Are you going to lay safe to me? I better jump on in there. <laughs> You know what, I'm, I'm usually just, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna uh, shoot it exactly a little shooter of, of a GM I like it I'm usually so concerned about the wine that I forget about <laughs> all the other stuff that's on there and then I miss out like ah oh, darn it oh wine that's is food crazy. it's important wine is food it's I get I get grapes every day I eat grapes I'm gonna tell people this I I consume grapes every day well balanced diet yeah it's very good <laughs> um. So Carol loves it, that jam's uh, great with the jam. George mm -hmm. loves it too. Great, I will try momentarily. Yeah. And that jam, again, Brins Mission Hills has it right now, but we could get some of it to Del Mar. I'll tell them that they, should, they better get it because it is so, so good. I yeah, think. it was good. Like I said, I just I, I should have put more. I'll put more on my next bite, but I'll, <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let you have some. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nice of me? You're so very kind. <laughs> this is why we like you. <laughs> Bringing the worlds together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. But it, you know, it's cool. Like that that part of the country, we've seen a lot of uh, cheesemakers emerge. Like uh, 
uh, in, in the south in Georgia and um, yeah that's kind of cool to see right other ones I mean, in North Carolina mm-hmm. yeah and, we're seeing um, them all over it's cool yeah it is really cool we have a friend out there too Rob G- Roberto uh, in here mm-hmm. I mean that's watching, watching. Out, out there I mean. uh-huh out there and she says hello Roberto who could this be Dania Hey, Donya. <laughs> so if anybody does, has comes to our Mission Hill shops, you know Donya. She's our just our little engine that can, that could, that does. Um, come say hi to her at Mission Hills. Donya's a her. superstar. Yeah. <laughs> Missy she Don- works on I haven't seen plates. you in a long time. Donna. No, she works on a lot of these plates, you guys. So when they look so beautiful, know that Donya's behind a lot oh, yeah. of them. <laughs> I just said, I, wonder, I don't know who made these plates. Yeah, it was probably Donya. It could be Nate or the plate, yeah. or it could be Donya, but they... <laughs> Awesome. You say awesome Nate the plate? Nate the plate. <laughs> <laughs> I need a name for Danya, but Danya also kicks butt on the plates. So <laughs> now you've got me thinking for a, of a name for Danya. Give me, give me a. Give him a minute. The a cheese moment. name will come. The cheese <laughs> name will come. Okay, I love it with the jam. Yes, thumbs up on the jam. <laughs> yeah, that's good stuff. Um, cool. So that, I mean, that was a pretty straightforward cheese. It's a, uh, it's a Robiola style from North Carolina. And Robiola, I explained what it is, but in the in the brie family um, and mixed milk, so it's it's unique, it's fun, it's different, but uh, you know, pretty straightforward on the on the with the flavor profile with like the buttery, mushroomy, um, and I would call it a crowd pleaser for sure. For sure. Hey, before we go, I I, I took little I got three little tidbits, factoids about each state that Ooh, we're visiting today okay. in honor of America and the American selection. North Carolina. Well, Wright Brothers, we do know this. Mm-hmm. So Wright Brothers, you know, born there, and then that six, six, the first successful powered plane flight was North Carolina. What, right? Very cool. What? Um, oh God, don't get me any more detail <laughs> than that. <laughs> no, okay, I, 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 okay. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> Were you gonna say the year? And <laughs> he's a professor. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really good. Um, then this was interesting to me. Mount Mitchell is the highest peak east of the Mississippi, and yeah. that is in. Uh, North Carolina. Yeah. I would never have guessed that in a million years. I don't know why, but oh. I just learned that and I mm-hmm. don't know why I learned that. Somebody on TV was talking about okay. that. Okay. Yeah. It might have been a, a politician or, or somebody. Or like, someone. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, we know that cottonseed was born. This cheese was born in North Carolina. You know what else was born there? Uh, <laughs> is it a person? Nope. Um, it's an edible. Not an edible. <laughs> Well, I guess you could. But then it, you could, yeah. Um, tobacco? I don't know. Krispy Kreme. Oh, really? Yeah, Krispy Kreme <laughs> comes from North Carolina. I think a mm, cotton seed infused Krispy Kreme donut would be delicious. Crisp? I'm, I didn't. I'm surprised Maybe that Krispy Kreme is, is from. Yeah, that's is from there. That's what North Carolina says. Remember when Krispy Kreme came to to California and it was yeah. such a big deal. Such a big deal. I would always say hot or something when they were floating down their little Krispy Kreme river of oil. Uh, is Remember that, that? And the hot sign would flash like hot donuts, hot donuts. I. You know what? When it, it were, there was so much hype around it, it was like the Popeyes chicken sandwich for a while. Do you, do you know that whole thing too? No. It's all marketing, but um, <laughs> but I remember it was just like there was so much hype around it, and it was almost there was no way I was not going to be disappointed because there was t- just too, too much, much hype, hype around it. I mean, they're okay. they're good, they're, they're okay, good. but I don't need one every day. What about In and Out? In and Out, <laughs> lots of believe hype. the hype. <laughs> all right, I knew you would say that. <laughs> um, we have another factoid. Uh, Carol Alley's brother is from North Carolina. So we got a lot of North Carolina connections tonight. Does uh, he so. play basketball? It's a big basketball, college basketball state. <laughs> oh, that's state. true. I know that. True. Mm-hmm. Wake Forest, North Carolina, mm-hmm. Duke, NC State. That's so true. Don't I know it's figure. a big deal. I'd love to go to a college basketball game. Okay. At any of those go. places. Yeah, it would be good. Love it. All right. Let's go to California next. California. Coast to coast. Yes. Mm-hmm. So now we're working our way up. We know we always try to do that. We try to taste and order. Do you want this one? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. Can't speak, but yes. <laughs> um, and this is the seascape. Oh, smell it. I like it. Oh, yeah. I don't so, know what I, I'm so bad at putting a word to what I smell, but I love it. <laughs> you know, what are you I'm getting like a, almost like a popcorn. That's a good description. Popcorn. I like it. I get popcorn on this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm into popcorn. Seascape is an American original. It's from a cheesemaker that we featured many times on this show. Speaking of um, Sideways, the movie, <laughs> th- this um, cheesemaker is in Paso Robles. Paso. Oh, sorry, Robles. <laughs> <laughs> Paso Robles, Paso Robles. They, the I'm going to tell you. Yes. Say 
What do mm-hmm. the, lo- the locals say? Because we heard. Yeah. The locals say Paso Robles. We heard it on the radio. We heard it on the news that night. Mm-hmm. I've always said Paso Robles. Mm-hmm. But they say Paso Robles. The verdict is still out. <laughs> so we do need, do we need to say what, what they what they say. How they I'm, pronounce it. I'm just going to sit and eat Utah. <laughs> Central Coast. Mm-hmm. Been around for almost 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is an American original. He makes all different types. He, he makes goudas, he makes blues, cheddar. He makes cheddar, mm-hmm. he makes washed rind stinky mm, cheeses. That's right. mm-hmm. There's nothing he doesn't he doesn't make. So I don't know if this Reggie. would be more like a um, his name's Reggie Jones. I don't know if this would be more on the gouda style or I would cheddar. call it more gouda y. Mm-hmm. It's almost manchego y too, like yeah. the texture to me. It's mm-hmm. so interesting. And it is really sweaty. Mm-hmm. And it's not sheet milk. Like normally sheet milks are the sweaty ones, but this one's sweaty. So did you know we picked mm-hmm. two goat and cow mix yeah i Jesus. didn't until i just realized now. that right now yeah so go figure goat figure <laughs> okay <laughs> it's bad <laughs> this is but this is a this is a blend of mm. goat and cow's milk i love it and it's it's um i would say it's most similar to a gouda but it's not sweet like a gouda to mm-hmm. me it has more of a savory yep savory notes on. you know what my term for this is what's that it's picnic perfect you <laughs> know how you have pitch perfect things like that this is picnic perfect mm. I think you would just throw a wedge of this in your backpack. So, so this, if I can have a picnic, this is awesome. This mm-hmm. is, for lack of sounding mm-hmm. elegant, this is a table cheese. And that's not a bad thing. No, it's not a bad thing at all. It can still be elegant. It means, mm-hmm. it just It'd means it is good for any occasion. It means, it really, the way I look at that term is you leave a chunk of this out on the table every time you walk by. Grab a chunk. You grab a chunk. <laughs> or you just grab the whole thing and take a bite. And take out a bite of it. if it's just here. Yes, why not? <laughs> Um, I like it. Yes. The name mm, is inspired by a luxury resort in okay. Aptos. Okay. Is it Aptos or Aptos? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, where, I don't know if we said the age on the first cheese, the cotton seed. I'm yeah. guessing that's within a month or I so. I would say two, month or two max, yeah. But the seascape is about five months mm-hmm. in age. So I love it. A little older. I gotta say, I will eat seascape. Mm-hmm. That's just snack around cheese. Yeah, that's a right? that's a good one. I, uh-huh. I'm gonna try. I am. You gonna can do try it with the. You gotta do it with the jam again. With the jam. Everybody do it with the jam. In the meantime, Jason says, "Boo, Tar Heels, go Jayhawks." So you must know that because I don't know. <laughs> the, my basketball so teams. Jason maybe went to Kansas because oh, another Kansas. basketball powerhouse mm-hmm. is in that part of the country, uh, Kansas, the Kansas Jayhawks. Okay, well, mm-hmm. Kansas, we're celebrating all Americans, so Kansas mm-hmm. is good too. You throw in Kentucky, and there's like a handful of schools that, that win the national championship every All the time. Year I hear the name, so mm-hmm. okay, gotcha, gotcha. And Carol's brother's not basketball player, but Olympic swimmer. What is all this sportsman great Michael strength? Michael Phelps Ross? No, Michael Phelps Alley. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Jason Ross, Carol Alley. <laughs> um, Carol, the name of the farm for the seascape, uh, it's Central Coast Creamery in Paso Robles. And uh, mm. yeah, they're just right off the 101, their creamery there. What's super cool is Reggie makes a lot of cheese. Now his daughter is taking up the charge mm-hmm. and she has a couple cheeses that she's created on her own. So yeah. that's super cool. Um, so it's a definitely a family affair. Yeah, they're, they're right off of, um, it's, it's 101 you said? Or one? Um, the 101 I think. Mm-hmm. But they're, across, they're basically across the street from Firestone Walker. The big oh yeah, brewery. that's right. You, yes, mm-hmm. and you can go. I don't. Tu- I don't know if he does tours. Maybe you can do it by appointment. But maybe you can go See into his wheels. office and because mm-hmm. he, he does have a kind of a retail operation, I guess, where you can buy chunks of cheese. He's a great guy. If anyone ever wants to go visit a cheesemaker, if you're in a place to where you you know there's cheesemakers and you want to go visit one, you can email me and I can. I'll look into it and see if there's, and let you know if there's anyone in that area. You've got a connection. Yeah. <laughs> You'll tell him, Rob, tell him the professor sent you. Yeah. <laughs> he likes you. He'll, he'll get you in. Yeah. I'll hook you up. Yeah, hook you up. That's really kind of one of the closer, you know, artisanal yeah. cheesemakers. I mean, we do have a mozzarella burrata maker that's in Pomona that's closer. Uh huh. But um, for making kind of those large form wheels and all those different styles, that's kind of one of the closest to San Diego, right? Yeah, there's yeah. Um, there's a handful in the LA area. A few of them are fresh cheese makers, which is a different it's a different thing than what than the Central Coast. Fresh cheese are ricotta and mozzarella, and it's 
With fresh cheese, they don't go through the last step in the process, which is aging. And to be quite frank, the, the, the most interesting thing to see when you go to these cheesemakers is the aging room. And you just don't see that yeah. in a fresh cheese because it doesn't exist. I mean, they have like refrigeration, but it's, it's different. Like, yeah. you, what's most, I don't know, interesting to look at is in smell is the mm. rooms where they're aging mm, smell. the cheeses. And you just see just pot, stacks and stacks. And yeah. it's beautiful. It's a gorgeous thing. And you, you just, can, yeah. You see the mold growing on right. and the and weird mm, stuff. It's so good. <laughs> And that's one thing, Rob, like I just go through all this, you know, you're reading more and more because of all this, you know, we're doing so much virtual mm -hmm. stuff, like virtual travel. Mm -hmm. No, <laughs> not the same because you don't get the smell. You don't yeah. get all the senses. Yeah. You get, of course, the visual, obviously, and yeah. you can get a great visual with photography and stuff. Now but you don't get the smell. You don't get the taste. Virtual is get. great. For yeah. Like we've learned like, oh. it is great for a lot of things mm -hmm. and we're going to keep doing it for these like for the plates that we do and some of the cooking classes. It's great for yep. that. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. It's a mm -hmm. great way to connect. We can work with people all over the country. Yep. But like tra it's not a substitute for real for real travel. Mm -hmm. um, we do a, a cheese kind of I guess we call it a festival and yep. we thought about doing that virtually the cheese. Expo. Oh, did you? Okay. Thought about it, but we, we ended up saying, you know what? Well, let's just wait until because you want to see the huge piles of cheese. Yeah. There's going to be like, we do a, an event. It, it, it's really great. If we, yeah, <laughs> next year, hopefully we can, we're able to do it in June. We'll see. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we're, we're hoping to do it in June, but we get 30 cheese makers from around the world yeah. that come to San Diego and you, you pay for a ticket. And once you get in, it's all you can eat. That's a challenge, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you think you could do a lot. Like, you're like, oh, I could eat, like, yeah. three of these plates. Until you try to eat three of the plates. You should yeah. see, they go, they're, like, three-hour sessions. The first hour is just nuts. And then everyone's just, like, <laughs> like yeah, ready to pass out. Yeah. Um, but in a situation like that, we don't do it virtually because you want to see and smell. And you do. It's about smell to me. Mm -hmm. oh. Rob, when I did the little Vespa ride down, I got to say that the... One of the biggest joys was being out yeah. in the air because yeah. you smelled every time we were, drove through the eucalyptus forest. Yeah. You'd smell that. Yeah. You'd smell the coast. You smelled the trees. It's different than just driving in a car, even. So you true. Know? Yeah, yeah. It's, you got to get the smell. Smell, 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 smell. Um, I want my California factoids. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> and it's it's in the spirit of the season, in our autumn season. Okay. Are you having a turkey this year? Uh, I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we'll do. I'm sure we will. You must have a turkey okay. because more turkeys are raised in California than any other state in the country. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. And Who I don't knew? know why I don't think that I would know that. I don't know. I don't know where I think they would grow or roam around, but I didn't think California. California is huge and there's so mm -hmm. much agriculture and farming. Yes. So awesome. Now, maybe, I, don't the, I don't know if this is true. Maybe somebody out there can check mm -hmm. or maybe you know. Are there more oranges growing in California than Florida. Ooh, because we have the debate about more cheeses from and from Wisconsin or yeah. California. Oranges, Florida or California? Who does more oranges? I don't. I don't know we'll the answer, but yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was California. And you think of oranges, or Maybe you think of Florida. Be, yeah, as the orange state. Don't right. they have an orange on their license plate or something? I think so. Are they yeah. called the orange state? I don't know. They might be with the feet. Well, no, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to make a joke. We're I was going to make a joke. <laughs> no, no jokes. No political no, jokes. No political jokes. Um, but not only are we the turkey capital, but Fallbrook, just up the road, is the avocado capital of the world. Yeah. So more avocados grown in Fallbrook than anywhere in the world. I, so that's I believe really that. Right? I knew California's avocado. Because you always see the little stands. You yeah. can drive by and get a whole bag of them for like $2. Yeah. <laughs> that's really great. What yeah. about raisins? Because there was a band. Remember the band, the California Raisins? Remember the dancing California raisins when that came out? How old are you? Wait, wait, you're doing the Pee Wee Herman dance. That's but didn't the raisins do that dance? <laughs> maybe that's where Pee Wee got it, or uh, was it maybe. the other way around? I don't know. Somebody got it. Okay, here's a random factoid. If anybody, <clears throat> this is serious now. If you travel up to Pacific Grove, which is just out of uh, next door to Monterey in Carmel, okay. so up in Northern California, Pacific Grove, mm -hmm. there's a $500 fine if you molest a butterfly. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> this is a fact that everyone should know. Right? Wow. Now you know. Some things you can't unknown. Now it's, right? This is a problem. Now you'll see a butterfly and what will you think? I guess the word molest doesn't, like, it, it has a different connotation. Well, it is just that, like, said it's on the like books. A California uh, poppy or something like that? 
Oh, that, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it's the same. I'm just saying it's on the books. Do not molest butterflies in Pacific Grove. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, it, somebody has to have like, done that for them to make that law, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Again, like we don't know. Butterfly effect. Um, but Lynn, who actually, I know that Lynn lives kind of like, I, I, every time we do deliveries, and I don't know if you do the same, we're doing a lot of deliveries these days, driving all around, just even San Diego County, uh -huh. like San Marcos, Vista, and everywhere. Oh my gosh, how much is grown up there mm -hmm. and mm. It happens up there. So one of our friends, Lynn, said that Ramona used to be the turkey capital of the world. Wow. So Ramona, isn't that where Jack lives and has, he still sells turkeys in the Tash Farms, or maybe not commercially anymore, or? He's more Escondido. Okay. Which is, so I guess, is it next door? It's right next door. So um, interesting. Lynn, thank you. Turkey's here. Just is that in, Lynn Folks? Yeah. Oh, hey, Lynn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I know, Lynn. Uh, so, yeah, I know that area has, because we know a couple farmers up there that, um, that, that farm turkeys. In fact, there's uh, one of our really good friends, his name is Jack Ford, and his farm is called Taj, T-A-J Farms. Farms. Mm -hmm. He sells turkeys, at least he has every year. Fresh, like we're talking fresh, for Thanksgiving. not frozen for yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like, these are, you know, like free range, I mean, every, every descriptor you can use. Like, every descriptor, once, did you remember the time you free ranged the chickens at Liberty Public Market? Uh, yes, yeah. I do. <laughs> <laughs> this same farmer brought goats to uh, to Warwick's bookstore in La Jolla one time for oh, a cheese yeah. taste thing that we did. Right. This is so ten good. years ago. I, yeah. Actually, I know it's ten years ago because he he sent me a screen from Facebook like a ten year anniversary of that. Like a memory. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very cool. Um, uh, oh, Woodrow Wilson pardoned a Ramona turkey. You know, sometimes that one turkey gets pardoned every <laughs> Thanksgiving. Um, Woodrow Wilson targeted a Ramona That is a great fact. Pardoned a Ramona turkey. That's a great fact. That's a great fact. Yeah. We got, to, uh, it's awesome. <laughs> awesome. So, California, lots of good tidbits. We could go on and on and on. Thanks, Let's go to Wisconsin. Thanks, Woody. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. <laughs> so, we have, um, let's see. There's, I always like to say, well, let me, let me back up a little <laughs> bit and just talk about American cheese okay. in general. Because um, that's our, our theme tonight. We have our American wine. American cheese. Does does not mean craft singles. No. It does not mean terrible orange block cheese. <laughs> this is orange, not saying this. But it's but American yes. cheese means cheese from America, right? And it is some of the best cheese in the world. Yeah. I I would say the major hot spots, like the the the. Um, the three big places, cause it's made, cheese is made everywhere. That's why I was saying North Carolina and Georgia yeah. and Texas. So and cool. Mm -hmm. um, but California yep. and specifically Northern California. So Makes more sense. like where around where this wine comes mm -hmm. from. So the Bay Area, but even more specifically the North Bay. Yeah. Um, Wisconsin is a huge, huge, huge place for cheese. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not huge block cheeses. There are great oh, artisan yes. cheeses from Wisconsin. Rush Creek. Yeah, Rush, Rush Creek. There's Pleasant. great Alpine styles. Mm -hmm. There's there's Royal. really Raleigh cheese. There's mm -hmm. there's a awesome history of cheese making in Wisconsin. A lot of the folks in, in the Wisconsin area are their descendants of or their forebears made they're from Switzerland. Yeah, or, or Germany, right? Germany yeah. or England. And so mm -hmm. you see like their cheeses yeah. are a reflection of that. Sure. Cheddars, Swiss, um, Limburger, or um, yes. hybrids of those cheeses. Yes. I love that, that cross pollination mm -hmm. of foods. Right? Oh, before I lose my mm -hmm. train of thought here. <laughs> and then the third one is okay. Vermont. Oh I was gonna say what yeah. was the third? So yeah. that makes sense. I was I was Actually, drawing a blank. Oh. Too much wine. Vermont, okay. Vermont, Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> we California, don't, Wisconsin, Vermont. There, so we don't have a Vermont cheese, but the next one's Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And but then there are other places mm -hmm. where they have they're close. They're not quite those three, but you have like yeah. Oregon, which we're going to talk Lots. about, mm -hmm. um, and Washington, just the whole Northwest. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it, interestingly, it's a lot of the places where you see really good wine. Mm -hmm. Oh, you see the cheese. Okay, can I tell you American cheese story though? My mom, Gert, you know Gert, mm -hmm. small town in Austria. So in the Second World War, she specifically remembers the American troops. Mm -hmm. They, you know, had the planes and helicopters flying over, dropping provisions. You know what they dropped? It's going to be 
Velveeta. Blocks of cheese, you know, it, was, it really was. Yeah, it was the blocks of cheese and peanut butter. So those two things that she totally remembers the Americans dropping yeah. during the war was cheese and peanut butter. Cheese and peanut butter. There's mm-hmm. probably no better food when it comes to energy density. Yeah, exactly. Protein, uh-huh. calcium, all the stuff in it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that, good stuff. You know, that, that method, that goes back thousands of years. You know when Roman legionnaires went out 2,000 years ago and they were empire building. They were going all over Europe and even into other parts of like Northern Africa. And I mean, mm-hmm. they were all over that part of the world. They would, this was before refrigeration, so they would bring cheeses with them and they would have brought huge wheels of what is now called Pecorino Romano or Parmigiano type cheeses yeah. because huge. they don't need refrigeration. Yes. They would have just been these big, heavy, salty, blocks yeah. they probably wouldn't have tasted great they would have been very sweaty yes <laughs> very sweaty <laughs> not as good as they are today yeah but still good yeah preserve the milk uh-huh. yeah mm-hmm. so, so awesome i just already ate some of the hooks <laughs> i had better get in there too. oh you did mm-hmm. okay <laughs> so the let's hooks, talk about hooks the hooks is from I love it. it's a cheddar mm-hmm. and that's um not all Orange cheeses or yellow cheeses are cheddars, but lots yeah. of them are. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, some goudas can be can be dyed mm-hmm. with um, with the food the coloring. It is a natural yeah. food coloring called annatto. That's what they use to color uh, cheeses like this. And it's um, it's it's found. It, it comes from the seed of a of a plant mm-hmm. found in the Americas and I believe in the Mediterranean as well. Mm-hmm. But it's it's all for show. And um, originally. It was done to um, to make the cheese appear to, to be from a, 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 a animal that was on a really healthy diet. Because if, mm-hmm. if the animal is, is eating, or if they're, um, if they're out in the spring and the summer, and they're having wildflowers and herbs and, and lush green grasses, their, their milk in their cheese is going to be tastier. Rich, yeah. And more rich, mm-hmm. but it's also gonna have a darker tint to it. It doesn't get that yeah, not this orange that color. Mm-hmm. So this is with the assistance of a of a dye. Yeah. But they originally started doing this dyeing cheeses to um, kind of to trick the consumer and in, in, in mm-hmm. so cheesemongers who are people like us, people who sell cheese, got together with the cheesemakers and they, they did a little uh, little trickery. Got together. <laughs> they got together <laughs> and uh, and now it's really done more for tradition. And so yeah. a lot of, for whatever reason, a lot of the cheesemakers in the Wisconsin area, they dye their cheeses. Yeah, that, again, must be tradition. You know, that's just how it's always been done. Yeah. And yeah, I, why that, not? That's definitely what it is. It, in Vermont, for some reason, they, they have a lot more white cheddar and they yeah. don't dye their and cheeses. And don't. England, too. Yeah. You don't see as many dyed ones, right? There yeah. are some, but, so, but, but most of them much. are the traditional style. Yeah. And you have really two, tr- two types of cheddar. You have the really traditional ones that originated in and around the town of Cheddar in England. And those are usually cave aged. They're wrapped in a, in a cheesecloth and they, they'll, they'll age for maybe a year and a half to two years tops. And they're very, um, those are very minerally and very um, like limestoney. Weirdly, they smell like dirt. I always say they smell like a soccer pitch, a soccer field. <laughs> and then the other type of cheddar, and by the way, those traditional ones are still made t- to this day, but the other mm-hmm. type are the more factory um, style cheddars, and that's not yeah. a bad thing. No, a block cheddar factory made can be delicious. Yeah, mm-hmm. they, um, they they can age for a lot longer. Mm-hmm. Um, this one gets up to, to 10 years. We have it at 15 years before. This one's 20 10. years. 20 yeah. years, yeah. This is a 10 year, but they've made, as far as I know, the, the, the oldest one that they've released is a 20 year. Yeah. But we've been there. It's a little town called oh Mineral God. Point in Wisconsin. I think the front end of our <laughs> bus got through the town before the back end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we, I remember we toured their aging yeah. room and they, like every cheese maker, they had a bunch of stuff that was up in their rafters in their aging room that was not really going to, to get released to the public. It was just their experiments oh and their, their ones that they were kind of playing around with. And they, it's funny, they all do this. They all do this, yeah. It's all, mm. It's all an experiment. It's trial and it's error. It's trial really and all error. Trial and error. This cheese, Rob, do you remember this? They showed us, okay, 
They put this cheddar and they do create it in blocks. Uh-huh. They make it into a brick, you know, it's, big it's block. It's actually form. called the cheddaring process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep, to get it into that form. And then they sealed it in a, a plastic bag, but it's like a mm-hmm. big Ziploc bag. It wasn't completely tight, mm-hmm. like plastic, so it had room to breathe, but it was in like a giant Ziploc. And then they put it in a cardboard box and wrote with a Sharpie, <laughs> you know, this date, which 10 years ago, what were you, 10 years ago you just started doing these glasses. Huh. So write this on, and then they shoved it up into the rafters and oh. leave it there for 10 years. Yeah, I was in And what? look what you get. You get this crunchy, yummy, tangy cheddar. I think I was in fourth Crazy. grade 10 years okay, ago. Okay, stop. You <laughs> were kidding. not in fourth grade. No, I was not in fourth grade. <laughs> but, um, oh, the, um, Hooks is that's their the family's name, and they've been making cheese for forty years, something like that. And uh, they're masters. And um, yeah. what's really cool about them too is and that you can still see them every, I want to say Saturday in Madison. Oh my God, they do farmers markets at the, the farmers owners, market. The makers, the owners are there yeah. every Saturday, and they have they have the best farmers market I've ever been to in Madison. Oh, I've never been. Yeah. And um, they, well, there was a conference there one year. Mm. Nice. And they, on Saturdays, they surround the capital, that's the capital, mm-hmm. and it's all just farmers and artisans, salt of the yeah. earth, ar- artisans, and it's, I, the, one of the things I vividly remember, this is years ago that I did that, um, was they're like militant, and they're so strict about the way you walk, oh. like you have to walk in their flow, oh. like, so if <laughs> you have to like, this traffic goes this way on, on one side. One way streets? It's, yes, or you get in big trouble. Okay. And I didn't, I was a dumb California boy out there and I got yelled at and like, they set me straight. Set you straight. Well, on that note, since we're doing trivia, mm-hmm. the first one way streets in any city? We're in Madison, Wisconsin. No, no. <laughs> Eureka, Oregon. No. Coming up later oh. <laughs> in our factoids. <laughs> I thought we finished. Oh, or, or sorry, <laughs> I was thinking California. Isn't there like a Eureka in California? That I don't know. Oh, there so is a Eureka. Yeah, but there's a Eureka, Oregon. Okay, all right. I Eugene. Believe, I believe you. Eugene, Oregon. Ah, so I was right. <laughs> Dang it! I hate when that happens, and it happens often. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the crystals in there, you guys. If you're getting oh, yeah. that, yeah. Did somebody ask about that or? Uh, no, I'm asking because I just got a bit of a crystal. I got the crystal too. So the crystal is they are amino acids or proteins that will um, that will form those crystals after about a year, year and a half. I love them. The older the cheese gets, the more crystally typically it gets. Mm-hmm. Cheddars, for for whatever reason, though, don't get as crystally as, say, a Gouda. Yeah, not quite as much. The the three, mm-hmm. four, five year Goudas are crunchy. So mm-hmm. crunchy. I mean, if yeah. you like that texture, Goudas yeah. are, are better. But um, but you get some crystals. of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, calcium crystals, you guys. Think of it like stalactites, stalagmites are calcium crystals. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the same thing. They're called ty- not as crunchy. Tyrosine. That's the n- tyrosine the crystals. Official the professor name. name. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> tyrosine, tyrosine. Tyrosine, tyrosine. Okay. Did you ever hear the term Carol said rat cheese? Rat cheese? Was the term for a really sharp cheese. Carol, rat cheese. Okay. Well, I am a rat. I love <laughs> the really sharp cheeses. And you would catch me with any of them. <laughs> I just realized, you know the other thing that rats really like? Peanut butter. Like, yes, I hear. Th- dare I say, I think, they ca- I think you can catch more with peanut butter than with cheese. I've heard that. I've heard that too. But it's just interesting because we yeah. were saying like peanut butter and cheese were the things that we dr- that they dropped down in wartime, and that's <laughs> and they're the, the rat food. I mean, okay, stop. That's what's going on. But, it, but that's two favorite amongst many living creatures. I uh, yeah. I think of when like we have people that come in sometimes and they say, oh, I want some uh, I want some orange cheese or some yellow cheese, or I don't want orange or yellow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I would have thought like. Rat cheese, that term would have made me think of like a cartoony or a, uh, you know, like a, like a Ratatouille. cheddar. Ratatouille. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know in the movie Ratatouille, Rob, he actually slides down a cheese grater on a piece of mimolette. <laughs> if you watch it, I'm dead serious. A piece I need of to mimolette. watch it again. It? Yeah. Because I was, I think I saw that movie before I was a cheesemonger. That movie came out probably 20 Look years ago. Look at it again. Yeah. A piece of mimolette is featured in Ratatouille. It's amazing. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay, you want to hear my Wisconsin facts? Yes. Not a shocking one. Produces more milk than any other state, yeah, yeah. which we get it. There's t- lots of cows and mm-hmm. stuff in Wisconsin. This one was so amazing. And, oh, that's another one. Mostly cows' milk in Wisconsin. Yes, mostly. You do, not right? all. Not a lot. Of sh- do you get any sheep? There are some sheep's milk, like Car Valley has a couple sheep's milk. Right. 
They're and there are some milk. goat's milk, but it's mostly cow's milk. They've got the land, I guess, mm -hmm. to support and the, the, the grasses and stuff to support the cows, right? And by the yeah. way, sorry to... Um, it's okay. I'm changing well, it's okay. from what you're, where you're going, but I know from, from a lot of the folks in Wisconsin, like when we've toured there, they tell us that their ancestors, they were just driving, you know, that direction, and when they got to a place that looked like home, they stopped. Oh, so yeah. those plains, so good. Yeah. those where like northern European plains where you see a lot like a lot of cow's milk cheeses come from, yeah, in northern France, in uh, the Netherlands. Um, like you told me that story about your parents when they drove. They did. They drove right. and stopped in Colorado. They stopped they in Colorado. The they saw the mountains and they thought it was the Alps. My dad was heading to Pasadena. They stopped in Colorado. This is Panini, by the so way. So we introduced Panini. Yep, <laughs> He's our Swiss mountain dog, but he's not um, limited to Swiss cheeses. He will eat any cheese and be happy. Okay, buddy. Okay. Um, yeah, she stopped. They stopped because it looked like the Alps. Yeah. And so you're right. Okay, so Wisconsin, they yeah. stopped because it looked like and he likes you too. Hey, he buddy. He okay, smells we got, cheese. We got a friend. Cheese. All right, our factoids of Wisconsin. 26,767 miles of rivers and streams. Wow. Cow, so that, cows yeah. like nice water, rivers water and source. streams. Yeah. So there you go. It kind of makes sense. It all goes together. But that was fascinating. I would never have guessed that. I don't know why I would have thought like Washington State or somewhere might have more. Yeah. I don't know. Or New York. I don't know. Wisconsin. Uh, okay. When you think of ginseng, ginseng, uh -huh. am I saying it right? Where, what think do you so. think? Um, I think of the tea. Tea. And where would you think that might come from? Japan? I would say China. Okay. Wisconsin. Really? Wausau is the ginseng capital of the world. Interesting. I would never in a million years have guessed that. Huh. Well, there's your Wisconsin fact of the day. Wow. Fascinating. Yeah. Everybody like Panini. Yeah, Panini. She can just, <laughs> we're going to leave and we're just going to let Panini sit right, right here. All right, everyone. We're out. Have a good night. <laughs> All right. Wisconsin's cool. Like I, I really like. Um, I don't know that I've been to Milwaukee, but I've, um, I've been to Madison a few times. It's because we're in the cheese business. Yes. But Madison's Madison. a cool town. Yes, you're right. That town square. The college I town. Call it. And, yeah. yeah, just everything about it. Really, really nice. That's a good place. It gets to cold eat. in the winter. It does. Yeah. I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I prefer San Diego. But. <laughs> <laughs> but it's but it's a cool place. Yes, for the Midwest, we're really good. Um, all right. Shall we move to We should move Oregon. to Oregon. Which, what did we write on here, Rob? Do you see, I don't know what they ended Let up going see. with. Oregon blue, what does it say? Yeah, Oregon here? blue. It says, hmm. <laughs> where it might be from. <laughs> Anybody guess where Oregon blue might be from? We're funny. I know, we try to be. <laughs> Ian, who, you know, our Mission Hills shop makes these, and he just saw that and he goes, did you mean to put hmm on there? <laughs> and I said, well, it was either hmm or duh, yeah. where Oregon Blue might be from. <laughs> Oregon Blue. Um, so the cheesemaker is Rogue, Rogue Creamery, mm -hmm. and uh, they are in the Rogue River Valley. Yes, Central Point, Oregon. Which is south, like that's in the, closer yeah. to the border with California. Yes. And can I tell you, we stopped there on our little Vespa ride. Mm -hmm. It is a valley. When they say it's a valley, it's like um, the Sacramento Valley. Mm -hmm. Just completely the same valley. Um, they've been there a long time. Yeah, well, the, I have mm -hmm. some stats on it. And I, I know a little bit of, of, about them, but I know um, they they first they first got going, you say a long time, mm -hmm. 1933. I looked oh. that up because I knew they had been there for a long oh, time. Oh, okay, 33. 54 is when this cheese came out, but 33 is when the creamy did. Yeah, okay. here's, here's stats for you. So 1933 is when they first started. So they, that would make them one of, if not the oldest cheesemaker up there. That's still going. Because of the Vela's? Doesn't that go back to the Vela and that whole thing? Yeah, yeah. so the, mm -hmm. the original owner, the guy who started it, was a guy named Tom Vela, I believe. Okay. His son then took over. His name was Ig Vela. Ig, and is that really his name? Do you know? Ignacio. Ah, oh, okay. I yeah. wondered. I'm like Ig. Uh -huh. And they're legendary. Um, they also opened a creamery in Sonoma, and they made a, a an American classic called Dry Jack. It's called mm -hmm. Vela Dry Jack. And so they have a that creamery is still in Northern California, yeah. in wine country. Um, but in 2002, the Velas sold the Rogue Creamery to um, a guy named David Gemmels who still uh, right. operates it to this day. Yes. 
Row Creamery. Row Creamery. And they lots of blues. Lots of blues. They mm -hmm. make uh, they make cheddars. They are there is a connection to the Rogue Brewery. I don't think they're this one in the same anymore. But at one point, I do believe that they kind of spawned from the same um, from from the same company. But yeah. uh, they make they make a really famous blue called Rogue River Blue that can, comes out seasonally. I believe we've it's come and gone this year. Is that true? It has come and gone. Yeah. If you didn't get it this year, you guys send me a message. Get on the list for next year because it comes out in like September. Well, and they and only it goes fast. they yeah. give us like a certain allotment. We got two one wheels. Wheel shop, is it one wheel of shop? Or something? Not a, not enough. <laughs> it goes fast. Um, but um, th this is really their flagship. This is their original. This yeah. is their original blue cheese. Um, they there's a there's a cheese called Point Reyes Blue, but oh, I, right. I believe the original name of Point Reyes Blue is is actually original blue. Oh, it was. I think you're right. From yeah. So this mm -hmm. is kind of like same deal, but it's from like, from Rogue Creamery, uh -huh. um, Oregon Blue Vein. It's uh, it's based on Gorgonzola, but to be honest, it's not really like mm -hmm. a Gorgonzola. I mean, it's the the biggest similarity is that it's a blue cheese, but yeah, it's gritty. It's super gritty mm. and it's super mushy right now because it's been warm okay. and you mangled it. <laughs> but it's still it ain't, it ain't about looks here, Gina. You guys, I know it ain't. <laughs> Nothing should be about looks. It should be how like how it performs, how delicious it is, mm -hmm. or just how fun it is, right? We too much is on looks. Um, okay, to this cheese, you guys, gritty, blue, cave aged. Okay, this one you have to try with the grapefruit because I think spectacular, mm -hmm. and you have to try it with chocolate. They actually make um, chocolate truffles that they infuse the blue in. So it's a blue cheese chocolate truffle, and they sell these at Rogue Creamer with this blue foil on it. They're super cute and delicious. I love this cheese, and I haven't tried it with the wine yet, but super delicious. So you said I have to try it with the jam. Try it first with the jam, but then try it with the chocolate, because you agree, right? Blue um, cheese and chocolate. Oh, yeah. That's always a, a winning Amazing. combo. Amazing. You don't ever kind of think to do that, but should do that. What about, a, you know how you get the little chocolate truffles, mm. like at C's Candies or any of them, and inside it can be raspberry or whatever. It should just be blue cheese inside. That's a good one. Maybe we should make sure making those. Who can make them? <laughs> Sarah, we'll just get her on yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that's good stuff. Did you that's have some? Not with the jam yet. I have here. the cheese right here. Okay. Well, you keep eating. You keep eating. Um, but Rogue River Blue. I gotta try it with, um, with the chocolate. Isn't, Carol agrees, out of this world, blue. I like the texture because I like tangy. the gritty. Do you get the gritty? Yeah. That gritty stuff? I like it tangy. So Rogue River Blue is almost similar except that they macerate it, which essentially means soak it, in a, is it a Syrah or a pear brandy? Oh my God, the Rogue River Syrah Blue. Syrah leaves. Syrah leaves. Yes, wrap it. Mm -hmm. With brand, and then they soak the leaves mm -hmm. you know, yes. in a local brandy. Oh. So it's sweet. Blues, you guys, you always want to pair with something sweet. Also, what would be delicious is this blue with the apricot, the dried apricot, because having that something sweet with the salty, gritty blue is amazing, right? So good. You, you can't even eat. He's just eating. It's really, really good. Rob agrees. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a good sign. And it's minerally because it's in a cave. It ages in a cave, yeah. so it gets that mineral quality, right? Which I love. It's got a little tanginess to mm -hmm. it. It comes wrapped in foil. A lot of blues um, do, right? A lot of blues yep. get, come wrapped in foil, mm -hmm. and um, you know, a lot of it is because the the bluing happens because air is is let into the interior of the cheese when they they poke holes in it, um, and that's because there's already a, a penicillin that's in the cheese, kind of mixed in with the curd, and when they poke a hole in the outside, it lets um, oxygen in and that's where the the blooming happens it kind of like grows out between those curds or through those curds through the curds and you have to it's amazing the science behind that i would love to understand more but honestly i tell this story often i remember first opening the shop and you know didn't know too much about cheese but we would get say a half a wheel of roquefort mm -hmm. from france and it's cryovac you know it's it's wrapped tight because it's got to make the journey across the sea and get to us and when we would unwrap it and cut it, it would be golden. It wouldn't even be blue. And I remember the first time we opened one, I cut open the plastic, you know, set it on the counter, turn around, and it's it's gold, you know, but then I turn around and then I turn, come back, it had turned blue. Yeah. Because the air hit it. Just like Rob said, it has to have that interaction mm -hmm. with the air to get that bluing effect. It's crazy. Science. And we can, I mean, we can do whole, I mean, we can do a whole... Oh. 
yeah. like semester on on cheese making and all the, the different things that cheese makers can can do to create different cheeses. But even even just blue cheeses, we can do a whole we can do a week on blue cheese and and why they're. I mean, the blue cheeses. Oh. Singing the blues, they can be. they can be soft, they can be hard, they can be Crumbly. goat, mm-hmm. sheep, cow, buffalo, yes. mixed. Right. They can come from anywhere in the world, mm-hmm. and the it's it's all about how they they make the cheese. So like for a softer cheese, bigger curd. For us for a harder cheese, smaller mm-hmm. curd. So mm-hmm. smaller curd expels more whey. I mean, there's so many different things they can do, and and uh, but. So some some blues are less blue than others. Yes. I mentioned gorgonzola, but gorgonzola dolce is very light on the bluing, and it that means it's a milder. You yeah. can look at it and you can tell it's a milder <clears throat> cheese. I always like the saying, "The more blue you see, the stronger it will be." Oh, and that's pretty true, that's right? Good. Isn't that good? Rhymes. Most, most it importantly, it rhymes. I do. Yeah. You know my iterations <laughs> in the rhymes. I love it. Like yeah, love, love, love. But it's kind of true, right? It, well, it, it is true. Yeah. And Professor. the second thing I was going to say is. <laughs> Um, so the blues that have a lot of bluing in them, so the Valdion or the Cabrales, Cabrales, the ones from Spain. Roquefort. Roquefort is usually very, very, it has big old, big. dark, dark um, blue veining, Navy. almost purple mm-hmm. or um, black almost. Yeah. And um, that's going to be a stronger cheese. Mm-hmm. But the cheese maker can't, or, or the aide, the affinu, or the guy who ages the cheese, if it's a different person, they can kind of control that by... By how much air they let hit True. the cheese, how big, how big the holes oh, are, the holes are yeah. that they poke, how much they age it. There's lots of different ways yeah. you can tweak it. Tweak. All right, Rob, do this same thing. Oh, you ate it all? <laughs> Come right. on, there's a little bit left. Okay, wait. So George claims, because I'm always a fan of the blue with the sweet stuff, but George claims the blue with the Cornish on is something to try. Oh, okay. So I'm trying it right now. You know what that is? That's complimentary, complimentary oh, because fun. it's salt and salt. And then it's going to be texture too. You know what this reminds me of? Huh. Putting a blue cheese olive in a martini. Yeah. Yeah. Having that. Mm. Ooh, tangy. It makes the cornichon super tangy to me. Or it's because I ooh, had the sweet before it. But yes, I like the blue with the corn. You got to try blues with mm-hmm. everything. We've converted. Jason typically doesn't like blues, but now oh. Oregon blue has converted him maybe to be a blue fan. Hmm. Yay. I like that. <laughs> That's kind of fun, right? I tried it with the apricot, it was delish. I didn't try it yet with the grapefruit, but it would be delish. The chocolate, remember, don't forget to try it with the chocolate. Did Jason have it on its own, or did he try it with something like the grapefruit? Or the the, the oh, Kiko? Oh, I don't know. Well, I'll say, Jason, let us know how you tried the blue on its own, with mm. something, how did you discover that you liked it? Did you mention blue cheese with the apricot, too, is always a fun one? Yeah, because that's what I ate a minute ago, like a whole blob in my mouth that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was so, so good. It happened. Oregon. But blues, like Rob said, are from every milk, mm-hmm. from all over the world, in every style and texture. Mm-hmm. You can even have a blue brie. There are such things that are a brie style but have blueing to them. There's a... Brie, uh, um, camisola, bet, black. Yeah. I was going to say camisola. I bet a lot of people have heard of camisola. Camisola mm-hmm. is um, it's a really well-known cheese now. It's from Bavaria in Germany. Mm-hmm. and But it's not... And I, and I use this term talking about Wisconsin cheeses, hybrid. Camisola is a hybrid. It is a yeah. mix of camembert and gorgonzola. Camisola. Camisola. <laughs> and so camembert is basically a brie from Normandy, and gorgonzola is a blue from Lombardy in northern Italy. Yeah. Mix them together, what do you got? Camisola. <laughs> like, so camembert is a town in Normandy. Gorgonzola mm-hmm. is a town in Italy. Yeah. Camisola, just a made up word. <laughs> made up word that's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a creamy blue. Yeah. So good. So, Jason, to answer to your question, oh, was with fig jam. It was last time, Ooh. too. Tried it with the fig he must. and a cracker. So good. Yeah. So the blue with any jam, again, sweet. Salty crunch, sweet is a good one. That's, a, that's always a good thing to do. Another thing we do for blues, mm-hmm. and I always yeah. tell people, like, if you have. Somebody who either doesn't like blue or doesn't think they like blue. They just don't know it. Have them try it <laughs> with something sweet. Honey is really good mm, for that. Yeah. For sure. For sure. You ready for my Oregon facts? Uh-huh. Okay. Oregon has more ghost towns than any other con- country? <laughs> state in the country. <laughs> that was the factoid that I... It was just Halloween. So I'm just trying to keep it seasonal. Hold yeah, on. You're not impressed. You're there not was impressed. a... 
One of the one of the rogue creamery, um, like their mascot is uh, Bigfoot. Did you know this? No. Big- I thought Bigfoot was like in Washington. Well, I, they s- supposedly they have Bigfoots around Oregon too. But okay. when you, I'm not saying ghosts are fake or anything. Oh, okay. But I'm just saying. Or Bigfoot. <laughs> I'm saying it. I think his name was uh, Harry. <laughs> Harry and Henderson. Harry, Harry. Yes, that's right. That's right. Okay, Oregon's flag is the only flag to have two different images on each side. On each side? Yeah. So that's the weird. Beaver is on the Oregon Beaver. There's a beaver on one side. I don't know what's on the other side, but it has two different images. Most flags are just one. You know, you see through them. But so that means you can't put it against a wall. I don't know. You could you try it or ask somebody from Oregon. <laughs> I'm not sure, but <laughs> isn't there a saying? Don't they say like keep Portland weird or something? Isn't that a saying? Yes, or it's, keep it's Oregon painted. Weird? Uh, the airport. Keep Por- no, it's no, it's next to it's by Voodoo Donuts. It's downtown Portland. Oh. Keep Portland weird or something. I think there's something in the airport too because I'm My pretty sure. Mm-hmm. Very weird. Um, okay, I used to think Rob that Lake Tahoe was the deepest lake mm. in this country. Okay. No. Crater Lake mm. is the deepest lake in the USA. Okay, that and makes sense. Old, yeah, and it's an old it, volcano site. Yeah, and it's I the mean, deepest one. I'm but, guessing it was formed by a crater. But why is it a <laughs> volcanic lake if it was formed by a crater? Well, we're, do you want to get into a discussion about tectonic plates? No, I don't have energy. <laughs> <laughs> you want a geneo- or genealogy, <laughs> geology lesson? <laughs> I'll give you a genealogy cheese. lesson. Um, <laughs> There, there's some really good. Actually, there's really good cheesemakers up there near Crater Lake too. Is there? Yep. What's up there? Um, they <laughs> are. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Um, gosh, I, I can't, now I can't remember their names. Shoot. I I don't know. <laughs> Wait, by the Crater Lakes? I don't either know. Oregon. Is it? Um, I'm stumped. Yeah. I, but I George know. says that. Blues, what we could write, it's very versatile and pairs with lots of foods. So we, instead of all the specific pairings that we sometimes say, we'll uh-huh. just say pairs with everything. Yeah, well, it's, it's with everything. With pairing, Jimmy. we, yeah. you know, we talk about this, but there's there is no right or wrong. It's just it's fun to play around. So yeah. what we what we do is kind of talk about the the, the different options. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you can go so many different directions, and again, there everybody. Whatever your Tastes favorite best. is, is the best yeah. for yeah. you. It rarely sucks. Like, it rarely, you go, ew, that's awful. Most of the time, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Some are better than others. I mean, mm-hmm. you, can, you can find things that will clash. I mean, the, the idea of, of a good pairing is that the, the pairing, the, the, when you add them together, it's better than they are individually or different. Maybe just that's different. That's true. Different. I think so, too. So you know you, what they are on their own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, so it's just kind of fun to explore and, and just... See what happens, I mm-hmm. guess. I'm adding to my daily intake of grapes. Oh, that's good. With, are those moon grapes? There's some that we have that we sometimes get called moon grapes, you guys, that are dark black purple like these. These might be the moon ones. Some of the dark yeah. grapes like this have, have almost have a pit. Have you ever noticed that? No. Okay. Maybe they weren't grapes. <laughs> Maybe they weren't. Maybe you ate a plum. Maybe that was an avocado. I don't even know what you ate. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, but so good. Love so that. as we hope that you all saw, American cheeses are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And so every style you can mm-hmm. think of is made right here. Yeah. And the other cool thing about American cheeses is that we we don't really have those the rules and mm-hmm. the regulations that you see with some of the old world That's true. stuff. Anything. So it's the Wild West. Anything, anything goes. goes. Yeah. Anything goes. There's no reason for... I mean, there's copyrights and stuff, but like, there's no reason to protect a lot of the American um, cheese yeah. recipes or regions. At least not yet. Maybe in a couple hundred years. Maybe we'll see. But you know what? Just make good stuff. Who cares? Just make something. Make yeah, something, something different. Delicious. But mm-hmm. uh, I mean, you go just go to Northern California, and every single style of cheese you can think of is made right there, um, yes. right off. You know, right in the North Bay. Yeah, North Bay. And in fact, there's a cheese trail That's in true. the North Bay. Mm-hmm. Right now, it might be more difficult. Next year, it'll be better. Yeah. Um, but it's a cheese trail in Sonoma, Napa area. Yeah. You can just take a little tour and stop and visit cheeseries, wineries, and have a, make a day of it. Right? And well, since you, I mean, you guys are cheese lovers, there's a there's an app for the cheese trail that you can you can download. I'm sure it's free. 
And uh, but that it will give you a map, and you, but it also gives a kind of a cool directory if you're ever yeah. if you're interested in just exploring and, and, and learning more. Right. Yeah. So many cool things. <clears throat> All right, Rob. You know what's next? What's next on the agenda of virtual yummy things? Are we doing um, a cooking class? We are with Cook. Nate. Okay. Nate uh, was a chef. He worked at Juniper Nighty, so that's everybody knows that. That's one of our most San Diego's most uh-huh. respected and delicious restaurants. Little Italy. Yep. So he's doing a Thanksgiving recipe. I can't wait to see this because it's kind of like a one pan Thanksgiving dinner. And maybe people are keeping a little smaller this year. Mm-hmm. Might be of interest. So that's on the 12th of November. And the next Wino Wednesday. What are we doing? Vive la France is the release of the Beaujolais oh, Nouveau. Oh, fun. Yes. Good. So this is an annual tradition. They, and they may usually make fireworks and a festival about the release of the Beaujolais. And that happens on the 18th, it's the 3rd. Thursday of every November, third Wednesday. Is that right? I don't know. We're doing it on the 18th of November, <laughs> the release of the Beaujolais of this year. Close enough. Um, so it will be very French and it will be very delicious. And um, if you're hungry and want to try some of those new things, please join. Um, if not, thank you for joining tonight. Um, hope you found something that you loved. Rob, it was a good American. And, good uh, stuff. It's all good. Yeah. I think uh, bring it all together, enjoy it all. Thank you all for joining in. We super, super appreciate it. Yeah. And Thank uh, you for hanging out with us, taking yeah. taking a break out of all this craziness, and just in get, getting back to the, to the simple pleasures. Yes. That's all it wine. is. Yeah. We're and, just going to keep doing that, right? And, and just yeah. like community, being together. And yes. Unity. Exactly. Whatever way. Yes. yes. On that note, we're going to say good night. Thank you. Take care. Au revoir, Abidazine, and what's what's au revoir? Yeah, until we see me. Until we.